Hi, welcome back. So you're still with me. Awesome. So we'll continue now. I've uh, shut down the Mongo database just to show you how you can start up again if you actually shut it down. So remember the first step is to go into the path where your Mongo database is actually located. So in my case, it's on the program files, MongoDB server, and I have version 3.2. And then in here I write MongoD. And writing MongoD starts the database. And the way you can see it's actually running is if it says waiting for connections on port 2700, 27,000 actually, then you know something is running at least. Now, if you want to shut it down again, you can do that by control C. So the control key and C, like Charlie, then it shuts down. Let me just start it again. Now, the second part we started last time was the Mongo, which is the, the console that we can start writing commands directly to the Mongo database. So let me just start this up again. Don't worry, we're not staying in the console for long. I just want to show you just the basics to work directly with a Mongo database from a console. So now I'm connected to something called test, which is a database that starts up automatically. We don't want to use that one. We want to use another database. How do I switch database? Well, let's start off by writing help in here. And it'll actually pop up with all the different commands you can do against the Mongo database. That's really powerful. So it's pretty simple to see. I just want to see what databases are in there. So I'll say show DBs. Actually, you can see it here. That's the command I'm using right here, show DBs. And uh, it shows nothing because there are no databases yet. I want to create my first database. I'm going to make a student applications. Um, and that student application is going to, I'm going to make a database for it. And the database is going to be called student app. So I'm going to type use because I want to use a database called student app. I press enter. Boink. And it says switched to the database called student app. So now it's there. It's not created yet, but we don't have to do that. Mongo will figure it out the first time we'll do an insert. But to do an insert, we have to understand what we're actually inserting into. If you have knowledge of a relational database, if you've tried that before, you know a thing called tables. Now, we're not using tables here, we're using collections, but it's kind of the same idea. A table and a collection are almost the same idea, except uh, in Mongo, collection is uh, the document part of it. So it's kind of like a key, um, a key value set where you have a key and then you have a value for everything. So we're going to make our first collection here, or our first table to put information into, and that's going to be student. So I'll write database, and then I'll write student, which is the name of the first collection I want to create. And remember, there aren't anything in this database yet, so Mongo will create a force automatically behind the scenes, which is really powerful because we don't have to sit down and create the database before we start using it. So in here, we'll have to tell it we want to insert something. Now, we'll get back to insert what that's all about. We're going to talk more about the CRUD functionality, but we're going to insert something. And then I'm starting a parenthesis here to explain to Mongo, this is a function that I want to call. This is a method to insert something into the database. In here, I'm going to do a curly bracket, explain that here's the thing I want to insert. That's everything inside the curly brackets is the thing I want to insert. And in my case, it's going to be a student. So let's give the guy a name. Let's call him Bill. And just notice the syntax here. I'm making a property here, which is name. Now, the property is uh, a student can have multiple properties, but a property is kind of one real world thing. Like I have a name. That's a property. I have a, an age. That's another property. I have a hair color. That could be a property. Etc. Etc. So that's properties for a student. So we have a name here, and let's also give him an age since I mentioned that. So making a new property, calling, giving him an age of 22 years old. Now notice I'm putting in a colon every time I'm defining what the property should be, what it should be set for, and I'm putting in a comma between each property. Let's keep it this simple for now. I'll add an end curly bracket saying that now this student is, is ready to be to be committed. And I'm putting in an end parenthesis to explain to Mongo that the method is done. So let's send the student now to the database. I'll press enter and I'll get an information saying write result and insert equal one. So it's inserted one row inside my database. Now let's just find out if he's actually in there by saying db.student.find like this. I'll press enter. 
point and my student pops back up. So I've actually inserted a student now into my Mongo database. And that's all for now. We'll dig more into details about this, but I just wanted you to just see that the Mongo database is running and that we can actually start adding things to it right now. We'll be back in a second with more information about the Mongo database. So see you later.